I hope there aren't people on this that are watching this that will be freaked out by somebody eating. You're not going to see me eating. No, we'll hear you. But it's a baked potato. I think they're going to. I, I think they're going to be slightly more distracted by either this cute little dog. What a cute little frog! Look at the frog. We know for the cat. Cat. And now there is a cat because I have cheese. Well, they can't see the cat. You'll have to translate here. for the cat. Sit here with me. Please no. <laughs> What, what I love about this as well is the fact that um, oh, lovely. there we go. Oh. What I love about this as well is the fact that people can go, wait, they made a frog action figure from uh, It Takes You Away. No, the frog's from a Marvel Legends figure. Um, and these pets are just here. You're watching slash listening to Doctor Who Review with Chris. I'm Chris and not Chris. I am also not Chris. And we are here with the second half of season 11 of Modern Doctor Who. There's a hair in her food. Doctor, there's a hair in my food. Oh, doctor, there's a hair in my food. Oh, Jamie, quickly, get a get a napkin. Get a spade. Get a spade. spade. What's he eating? I don't know. <laughs> I guess a trough know. full of fried chicken. <laughs> Why fried chicken? Because it's just the least gross thing to imagine taking a hair off of. Because you take it off and be like, right, it's fine though, isn't it? Ew, but then you've got chicken under it. <laughs> She's a pescatarian. Ow. At the time of this recording. By this time next year, she'll probably be back on meat. I uh, definitely won't, thanks. She will. Because she'll, 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 she'll have to have eaten the cat to stop the cat eating her potato. And then she'll get a taste for flesh once again. I will not, sir. I would never eat this cat. She's a little pup. She's a little potato. I thought you said she's a little pup. I was like, no, that's the dog. She's a little pup. Oh my God, they're not leaving you alone. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about <laughs> Demons of the Punjab, Kablam. The Witchfinders, It Takes You Away, and The Battle of Ranscor Av Kolos. We're going to try and keep it nice and concise like last time, because after this recording, if you still look for it, we're going to watch Resolution, the actual finale for the series, but we'll record the video like tomorrow or Wednesday. What? After that... this, we're going to watch the New Year's special. Oh, which is which considered is, the finale. Which is basically the yeah, actual okay. finale right, I get you, yeah. in terms of spectacle and tying up a, a storyline from the series. <laughs> Uh, I have thoughts about the finale of this series, but we'll get to that. This is mostly winners. There are three here I really like. Um, one here I enjoy, but it falls apart. And another I find really dull. Um, <laughs> Woo! Let's start with the good one. The Demons of the Punjab yeah. episode. I saw this one on broadcast. Yeah, uh, Vinay Patel's first script for the show. Um... For those who are like, which one are you about? Uh, it's the one where they go back to meet uh, Yasmin's um, nanny Umbreen. Um, and when they do, they find out she's about to marry a man called Prem, who is not her granddad. <laughs> she's like... Um, so when they got there, it was like, eh? Yeah, but they're also there like during the petition of uh, India. Uh, India and Pakistan being split apart, families being torn apart between you know those who are Muslim and Hindu and... Essentially, a very difficult part of history. Mm. Um, I think it's really good that they decided to focus on a part of history that maybe probably mainstream mainstream people. That's not what I mean, but like the majority of the population probably don't know about. Uh, well, well, in terms of like a United Kingdom viewership, our history lessons, at least as of when we were learning history and like our sort of, you know, God kids and that who were learning history, what we learned about from them of the stuff they're covering, it's the same old stuff. Mm. Like it's the Tudors, the, Romans. the Roses, a bit of the Romans. A bit of the Romans, I've like nothing but the Romans. A bit of the Vikings, a lot of World War One, a oh. bit of World War II. Oh, I didn't learn anything about the Vikings. Vikings was mostly like the school trip. Like you'd go on a trip to a museum and they'd look at some Vikings stuff and go, boats in it. You went to a cool school, obviously. I didn't. Um, I went to <laughs> school, and that's it. But, like, that's... Yes, because, I mean, Doctor Who was focused on, like, you know, um, World War Two. is well, focused on... Um, modern era and classic era, there's a lot of... This, a lot Victorian of era. What is best summed up as costume drama, appropriate exactly. eras. Exactly. Elizabethan, you... Victorian, Edwardian... Uh, World medieval. War One, World War Two, like and yeah. yeah, medieval, like the sort of stuff where it's like, oh yeah, there are decades worth of costumes mm. and props French and locations that are maintained yeah. for tourism reasons, 
ready to go at a moment's note. Oh, we need to film in a, in a Regency manner at the turn of the century. Yet, yeah, guess what? We can speak to this English, heri- your this English heritage site and they will yeah. they will get it ready for us. So it's nice to have something that's not... Not that. Not that, yeah, exactly. And, and also, like, you know, a lot of the UK's population are people from or generation removed from or a couple generations removed from those who would have been mm. in India or Pakistan at the time exactly. of the petition. And it's like to put focus on that is amazing. Yeah, and I, I think that's really, really good. It's also brilliant because it is, again, like Rosa, basically a historical. Mm. Yeah. Like there, there, is sci- there is a sci-fi element, but like Rosa, it doesn't, it's not the focus. It's almost the B plot. Mm. Like it, it's what drives people to be like, right, what's happening? We need to figure this out. Obviously in Rosa, it's Crasco's gonna interfere with like the course of history. Like, how's he gonna do it? Like, what's he up to? How do we stop him? But that feels like the oh yeah, we have to put that in. Plot. Yeah. Just meeting Rosa Parks and seeing that moment like being led up to feels more like the focus. Mm. Same with in this one. We're basically watching a family fall apart. Like, Prem and his younger brother, Manish, like... I thought I deleted my notes then. Oh, my God. God. Was it the sick? Uh, like, Prem and Manish, like, they're... I get played incredibly by Shane Zaza and Hamza Jutua. Amazing. Those two, I, th- I mean, not not to, you know, dismiss Amita Suman as Umbreen uh, or, or Lena Dingra as, you know, mo- uh, present-day Umbreen. Mm. She's lovely. We see her, obviously, at the top and tail. Um... And then, uh, what's somebody's mum called? Hasna. Shaheen Khan plays that role. She's great as well. Mm, Yeah. But the two brothers, two brothers and they're running. Like those two. Oh, it's it's heartbreaking to watch. Especially now that we're in a very divided political period in our current history where families are torn apart by essentially people who are like, leaning into desperation and a lack of control and being so easily swayed by like xenophobia racism um you know uh uh, basically every possible social phobia that is created and stoked by hatred for political gain that people latch on to we're kind of seeing like the parallels there and this was of course come out in 2018 so Two years after Brexit, two years after Trump, like... But hold on, Doctor Who's not political. Uh, no. Take a shot, she said the thing. Um, but, like... Just FYI, if you've not seen her before, I am joking. Yeah, she says that, like, every episode. <laughs> it just blows my mind that people say it's not political. Doctor Who's woke now. It's always been woke, Have mate. Have you ever watched <laughs> Doctor Who? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you should be like, running away from monsters, like who? Like, like the Daleks, it's just, it's just monsters, like bad guys and good guys fight each other. Yeah, what are the Daleks again? Um, but no, they're, they're, literally, they're literally the Nazis as a, as a space allegory. Yeah, but they're just buddies. Oh, God, yeah. Yes, they are. And they're parallels of real-life evil baddies that existed and still exist. Like, that's what they are. Um, yeah, so in this we have the, uh, the Kassar. Uh, oh, sorry, Kisar and Almac. Uh, what is the name of the species? Let's see. Tajarin. The Tajarin. Who the Doctor identifies based on the little information she knows from what she can glean from them are known as, uh, essentially, they're legendary assassins. They're a species that, like, either kill for personal gain, power, money, whatever reason. We never really learn, but, like, they are the greatest assassins. And the reason they are the greatest assassins... This this is the one trip up, and I wonder if this was in Fene Patel's original script or if it was in Chibnall's edit, but like because they've been seen at the site of like millions and billions of deaths over history of the course. Like a, they're an old species. She sort of implies they're like, you know, the Time Lords, the great vampires, like levels of old. They've been around since like the beginning. Mm. Stories of them have. But then of course in this we learn that no, they're actually showing up to pay respect no they were respects, their, weren't they well but that's they, the thing they, that's the thing like they show up to pay their respects to the moments of death and i wonder if that was meant to be it like she then learns oh god they were never this that was but just she says they, she says they were no but that's what i'm saying 
it turns out, oh no, we used to be assassins, but then our people died and yeah. while we're away. So now we mourn all of our lost like families and generations. It's like, okay. It's a bit of a switcheroo. But everything she said about them, it was never, oh yeah, we've, they, we've, we've seen them kill all these people. It's they've always been seen at the site of people's deaths. Like they, they must oh. have So I, I wonder if at some point the story was leaning into the idea of oh yeah they were never assassins. Mm. They've just they've just been misinterpreted. But it's like well at least yeah, partially throughout their history they've been misinterpreted. Yeah. And these two are the last of their kind. They get around the animation or puppetry thing by having them broadcast their speech into people's heads. Which at least they sort of go, well, let's do something different. It hurts to hear them because it's not something that the human brain is used to. Mm. Oh, is that why? That's why they were all kind of like, ah, whenever they were talking. Because it was, it was projecting into their heads. Um, Did they say that? Yes. <laughs> Must have missed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I like the idea of it's like, no, there's not actually a, a threat here because again, you can do stories where it's like, here is a period in humanity's history where like hatred and violence was rife and these aliens or whatever are going to take advantage of that. Mm. That has happened before. That will happen in future stories. Uh, one in flux, especially. So it's like, fair enough. In this case, it's like, no. Like the petition is big enough of a deal, big enough of a story, of a focus. The, the fact that it, the focus isn't the violence, it's how it tore families apart. Mm. Because it was about people kind of going to take sides. And it's beautifully played. The final scene where Manish and, and the people who've come with him to confront Prem is, like, it's really upsetting. Yeah, it is. Like, there is no happy ending to this episode. That doesn't mean there isn't positivity. The, yeah. the, the doctor presiding over the wedding, like... The, the, the talk she yeah, gives about like, really pretty. what love is is really lovely the little scene between Graham and Yaz is really lovely I think that um, Mandip Gill gets a lot to work with in this one like because of course she's well, yeah. hella confused about what the hell's happening she's like uh, where's my granddad yeah. like what is going on but it's also the nice tie-in with the start of the episode, though, like her nanny giving her the watch and saying, never get it fixed. And she won't tell her why. I thought the way that she played that was a bit strange. Who? Mandip? Or... No, no, no. Um, her, her nanny. Uh, what, her uh, present day Umbreen? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's mostly because she, she, couldn't was... really, she couldn't really give away the context at the start of the episode. Yeah. She couldn't be like... Because if, if you overplay that, she's almost like, I want to go back and find out why this watch got broken. Whereas instead the watch is more just a background thing until you see it happen and you go, oh, that's why she doesn't want it to get repaired. She's also you're not implying that she's like off a rocker at all, but she's certainly at a point in her life where she's kind of long past the upset of it all because of yeah, the life she's led. She's she I think So she's a lot more content. In the present day, I think it was just played a bit. Excuse me, played a bit too casual. Oh, it almost felt like. And now here is she's, she's me like, giving things away for some reason. Yeah. It's like uh, what? Um, with not much emotion behind it, it was really. It, 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 it she, she played it more like sassy grandma. <laughs> like it shouldn't have been Umbreen giving gifts to um, to what do you call it? To the kids. To Sonia and, and to and to. To Yaz. to Yaz, it yeah. should have been them looking through her things, maybe. Maybe just... like maybe like Yaz goes once a week to have a brew. Yeah, and it's just she she has to like, why have you never got that watch fixed? Just like yeah, it should have been something. Yeah, yeah. it just seems like, really the, the, a bit random. The back end bookend felt more natural because mm. that was that it was her yeah. going around yeah. and having a brew or her being around the flat and having a brew and, and then just sort of talking and her now being like, do you really want to know? And Yaz going no, because she's like no. There's a reason she never told her in the first place. Because it doesn't change their lives. Yeah. It's something painful, but she's so grateful for the journey she has had because of the family she now has. Yeah. That, like, revisiting it doesn't change anything. Yeah. She'll always be sad when she thinks back to what happened to Prem. But, but it, she'll... It, I guess it's one of those where it's kind of like, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have this. Exactly. Kind of thing. Yeah. 
like the motivation to leave and move to Sheffield has led to where she is in her life. That's now. friggin' adorable. The Sheffield whole idea that sounded exotic. Sounded exotic. <laughs> yeah. And the first, oh. she, the first she gets there, she's like, it wasn't what I thought it was, but like it's been home. But I love it. Yeah. And that's, that's the important really, thing. That's, that's dead cute. The, essentially, the human element of this story is all that matters and is its absolute like shining core, essentially. Mm. Um. It, it's one for people if people are like I don't really remember this one or like, I've not watched this one like I'm just curious what your thoughts are on the season it it's it's a rosa it's it's um not so much black orchid in terms of quality I don't think black orchid's anywhere near as good as this but it's like it's a black orchid it's a it's an emotional we're, we're gonna stop kind of, here yeah. and we're gonna learn about a family and their history and we're gonna mm. see what this is about um this is a story that's got a lot of emotion behind it and yeah. Do, do you know what it? Do you know? And, and I obviously mean this in the best way because I adore the show. Do you know what it reminded me of a lot more tonally? Mm. Um, the first two trickster stories from Sarah Jane Adventures. Whatever happened to Sarah yeah, Jane um, and uh, the temptation of Sarah Jane Smith? Oh no! Because obviously, the first one is the whole thing of like her friend now in the rewritten present being confronted by Maria on what have you done? You've changed something. What has happened? Like, where's Sarah Jane? But like, um, the flashbacks in that, obviously to their childhood, but more, more specifically the temp- temptation of Sarah Jane Smith from season two. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 yeah. That yeah. whole thing of like going back into your own family history and learning why. Yeah. And the and temptation to change something, but obviously. Or, or to stick you... your nose in, in a way that really isn't, like, it's not your place to do that. Yeah, this has already happened. Yeah. And you know the person... Like, obviously you know Sarah Jane, she was talking it. to get answers because that was the day that she was left with someone else. Yeah, and she her thought parents her parents left. left. Yeah. yeah. So there was a closure element there, whereas here there wasn't a closure element. It was a, oh my God, I want to go see me now when she was young. We've been talking, I just kind of want to see it. The doctor's like, mm. okay, but like super brief, super, super brief, let's do it. I don't think I'd ever want to go into the past and meet my family from the past oh God. like, like that I, I currently have now no it's too risky it's too risky because they think what a weirdo well they think hang you on are, you, look, you look kind of like us what is going on you are a loser go away because <laughs> I'd be like you oh my are God. a loser my dad is so cool he was such a rocker when he was a teenager and my dad would be like yeah, yeah, cool. She's a weirdo. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, your favourite film is Back to the Future, so surely your fear of going back to meet like parents or grandparents would be in case they suddenly thought you were cute and tried to go out on a date with you. That's vile. Yeah. Back to the Future, folks. It's an amazing movie. But seriously, think about it for a second. That's Gross. a horror film. Gross. <laughs> That's a horror film. No, ah. That is a horror film. Um, no, please. I really like this one. I yeah, really I like, like Demons. I don't think it's a... Um, Oh my god, let's put Demons of the Punjab on. Yeah. But it's say if someone says, recommend like some of the best episodes, mm. this is in that, like, yeah, this one. Yeah, it is. I mean. In terms of just like, and I don't mean like best episodes of Doctor Who necessarily, I just mean like when people go, so what, like, what can this show do? Like, what, you know, give me some examples of this show, like, being really strong. This would be like absolutely in sort of the 20 you give them and go, these ones, yeah. watch this. It's, um, it's not only a good story, it's. A really beautiful episode as well because mm. obviously they're on location oh my god yeah I, th- I think um, i think they were still in south africa so it would have been the same block as um the ghost monument whoever like i'll have a little look whoever colored these episodes or like was in charge of the, i don't know if that's a thing but oh no sorry this was in spain this was in granada oh really yeah Oh, and also a shout out to Sega Nakanola for the uh, the what's it the the Punjabi spin on the theme music. I was going to get to that on the end credits. Yeah, but the, the oh this, shoot, this... I forgot about that until I just read that in the production notes. Then I was like, oh god, yeah, that's amazing. This era slightly ruined by the next time trail. Jodie's era in particular, the color seems to be amazing. So like the contrasts and the yeah. Is that what yeah, no, th- this this season in particular, yes. Mm. And as it goes on, I feel like they go from beautiful colour balancing to what Instagram filter looks the nicest. Mm-hmm. But then again, 
I've not cracked open these Blu-rays yet, mm. so maybe on home video, in the purest, not streamed, not compromised, not compressed, whatever, it will look a little nicer. But yeah, there was uh, uh, a friend, friend of the show. They've not been on this show, but they were on the Niners Ten podcasts. Um, Didymus Holmes once described the Thirteenth Doctor era as being filmed through a potato. And that's a reference to the later stories where it's a little hazier. I love looking. potatoes. You're eating them right now. <laughs> Just having a break from my potatoes. Um, Demons of the Punch-Out's great. Yeah, I think I think having a filter over it, well, filter-like, is nice to a point because obviously it's not real. It's not real life. It doesn't really matter. Certain shots but it aids. If it does look literally like it's just come off of Instagram, it's like, oh, that's a bit shit. What are your notes on Demons of the Punjab, baby? My notes, my notes. My kingdom my notes. for my notes. I have a note! What do you have? A knife! No! No! Um, the notes. music is amazing. Yes. I mean, the whole the, soundtrack, yeah, but. The, yeah. The, uh, who's the. Sega Nakanola. Amazing job. Really, really amazing job. At the time of us recording this, it's uh, November the. 6th 2023 the other day we watched um the 60th anniversary concert uh on iplayer yeah because it had been out like the night before it was and so it relaxing was mostly, christopher fell asleep i was pre-work shift i just like drifted i drifted off toward the end <laughs> you missed I, the I, heard, I heard i heard ruby sunday's music <laughs> and then i dozed off and then i woke up and went oh god was out long you went Long enough to miss the Doctor's music. I, was were, like, I think you what? woke up. I literally missed finished. Shooty's theme. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, you missed the Doctor's theme." And you're like, "Oh, sorry, I've already heard the intro." And I was like, "No." Yeah, because then they played the, <laughs> the intro to the specials. It, it was, was like, the Doctor's oh, theme. Oh right. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> but like in that, they only did one. It was mostly Murray Gold arrangements. It's really good, by the way. It was great. It was mostly Murray Gold arrangements, but in the middle, and they got Chris Chibnall and Sagan Okunola mm-hmm. up and talked mm-hmm. to Joe Wiley, interviewed them, which yeah. was lovely. There was basically a medley. Of Sagan's work, they really it was, it was, like, it was like it was like a seven eight minute long piece, mm. and it was gorgeous. And you go, I mean, for stars, it was like, oh, it's weird hearing this like in an orchestral arrangement because we've heard Murray's before. Like yeah, yeah. we've been to the proms and stuff, and and the symphonic spectacular and things like yeah. that. But it was like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it really. I mean, <laughs> and, and this episode in particular, yeah, there is a difference between them quite. Sagan's is more um, ambient. Yeah, and um, Murray's is like marches is and themes. Like, is like and exciting ambient um, atmosphere. Yeah, uh, I was not to say he's not without he, he's not without melodies, but he, he's more an ambient kind of yeah. creating the soundscape of an episode rather than the the melody of a character. Or I, I think or it's whatnot. just beautiful, really yeah. beautiful. Uh, the Doctor is so cute because she is. She's just adorable. She's sweet in this one. She's adorable. Um, Although she gets a tiny bit heart when she's like, I knew we shouldn't have done this. We shouldn't have done this. And it's like, she's right. They yeah. shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, everyone is really attractive in this episode. <laughs> Everybody was really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even the um, even the um, shaman guy. Uh, oh, ever. shoot. Yeah, I haven't mentioned him. He yeah. was a great little inclusion. It's a shame he dies. Um, uh, he was so cute. Uh, da, da, da. Is I should it... have said shaman. It's not a shaman. No, 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 no. Uh, Sadhu Bhakti, Bhakti. Yeah, because he was the wedding's overseer. Yeah. Um, uh, is he? Is he in the credits? He is not in the credits on this thing. That's really that's weird. Wrong. Um, but uh, he, he he was very cute. Naja, oh no, Hakeem. There he is. Wait, no, hang on. <laughs> We're doing something. Was he Hakeem Bhakti? I don't know. I'll have to double check that. Sorry, carry on. Um. Yeah, everyone was really attractive. The colours are stunning. Nobody talks about that. Ryan, a bit of feeling, man. When he's talking about uh, when he's talking, you know, on the stag do. It's just oh. When when he's the thing is, I realise he shows emotion in his face really well. Not really well, but well. Toes and cold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But just the way he says some things when he's excited and. A bit goofy. Yeah. He's really, really good. Like in there. It's happening. The Sarah Jane clarification not, is happening, kind not, of. It's not. Like in. in I'm not the, sure I'll join her on this one. <laughs> in, the, in the one. <laughs> I'm with, not a huge fan. In the one with the frog. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah. that, but he's, it, there's bits in it where he's goofy. And it's like, it's actually really funny. Mm. But 
it's just when he talks like this and goes up at the end of his sentence. It's not exactly harming the theory. It's, like, oh, it's not gosh. exactly harming the theory of he was concentrating too much on getting the Sheffield accent yeah, right. Yeah, doing his it? GCSE drama. Oh, it just, gosh. I know, but it just it really grates me. Really does. Excuse um, me. As and I also bird. said it's shot like a film. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful looking. Um, it, it it looks very grand and very big considering it's a very small personal drama about this one family yeah. told in a in a big scary time. Uh, was that if you know some teams of the Punjab? Uh huh. Um, best episode of the season? No. Rose, a few. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think on reflection, I think I like this one possibly as much. Hmm. Yeah. I hadn't seen this since broadcast. I remember really liking it, but I haven't seen it since then. Now I haven't revisited it. I'm like, oh God, it's really That's what I'm saying. good. Ryan in Rosa's house mm. was really charming. One minute Martin Luther King. Yes, Rosa Parks. <laughs> He's exactly. just kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> when he was really poorly stalking her, like really yeah. obviously stalking her. It was charming. Really funny. That's a weird sentence out of context. <laughs> he was charming when he was stalking her. You know um, Kablam. This is... <laughs> I mean, just looked at your notes for Kablam. This is odd. So, remove the allegory for a second. Re- remove the obvious... Stand in for what Kablam is. It's not subtle, is it? No, but like, just just remove it for a second. Yeah, just completely remove it. Yeah. Imagine, right, here we go. Imagine it was a family-run post office business that's got a bit of backing and has now got robots helping them out, right? Someone sends a message saying, help me. Mm. So they go, right, we're going undercover there and find out who sent this because whoever's done it is quietly trying to get attention without being spotted. They must be desperate. They go in, they find some people are going missing, and then eventually find out that actually it's the post office itself going, help, someone is going to do something horrible using our facility, we need help. Like, But it can't just say that, because it's an automated system. But it's managed to find, it's, it's at some point figured out, if I get a message out, someone will eventually find that message and help us, right? Yes. Fine, cool idea. Like, the, the business is the one who's, like, trying to get help to stop someone in the business doing something horrible. Okay, very sci-fi. The problem is you're trying to make us sympathise with Amazon. Yeah. It doesn't work. No matter how much you try and Royal Mail classic Postman Pat icon- iconography it all... It doesn't really... You can't make it charming. You can't. Like, you can't do it because it's Amazon. And, like, the Doctor's reaction to, like, oh, yay, kablam, I got a kablam parcel. Fair enough. We all get a childlike reaction when we get a parcel. We can't help it it's as like human Christmas. beings. It's like, hey, little thing, wee. Or, oh, good, I was waiting for this. Like, it, it's a good feeling, usually, when it's a parcel. When it's a brown envelope, it's usually something else. But when it's a parcel, it's usually exciting, right? So, and then you remember that you ordered. Um, but this paper. is yeah, but this is also the doctor, who dismantled essentially space HMRC and the Sunmakers. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like who's who's deposed and dethroned kings and god emperors and taken them down a peg because of what they've done to the people that that worship them. Like, we've seen. You know, I mean, for Christ's sake. He knows not to tamper with the fabric of history, but the 11th Doctor still stands by and watches Rory punch Hitler because even even a little bit, he's like, yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough. I'll let him have that. I'll let him have that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not going to change history. It's not going to completely pervert history. It's going to feel better, though. But, like, it's still and kind we of... We all want to see it. totally fine that Rory has punched Hitler. We all want to see a, it. Stuffed him in a cupboard. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's... It's... It's, it's weird that the Doctor is, like, not at all mentioning... It, yeah, it kind of sucks that like humanity's being left behind. Mm. 
and and are struggling to keep food on the table because automation has taken over so much. Yeah. And those who are working here are working under the strictest conditions under bosses who treat them like crap. And they can't see their families. They've got to, like, stay there. Yeah. Like, the fact the doctor doesn't really comment on that is, is weird. weird. Yeah, because she obviously knows the company. Yeah, so which was she was excited to get know. a parcel. Yeah, exactly. A parcel which it's implied she ordered two incarnations ago, which is a fun little idea. Oh, I thought it was just sent to her randomly. No, it was a fez. Yeah, I know it was. She'd ordered it ages ago. She says, that oh, that I was... ordered this ages ago. Oh. And and that's kind of the, the gag of it, is the idea that she's only just returned to that part of space-time, and they've then caught up to her and delivered the parcel. Because they don't deliver across time. Yeah, well, yeah. They teleport sense. to locations, but they don't deliver across time. Um, so... And yeah, she puts the fez on. She looks adorable, bless her. Um, yeah. What? Doesn't suit her. <laughs> oh, it doesn't suit her, but she looks cute. She looks like, a kid. She looks like a kid playing dress up. She does, bless her heart. Um, Matt kind of suited it. He didn't at first, and then after a little while, he's like, damn it, it's grown on me. It's grown on me. It's grown on him. Oh, God. Fez is a cool. God damn it. She doesn't need accessories to be cool. No. Although her earring is amazing. Yeah, it is. Um, and a continuity nightmare. We'll get to round to oh that in two episodes' gosh. time. Um, but I'm tired about time. I'm tired about time, aren't you? But um, yeah, it's just I don't hate the idea of them doing an undercover episode. It's very school reunion, you know. Like we've had stories like that before. Mm. But the fact that the villain of the piece is someone who is justifiably pissed off with how things are going. Yeah. In a way that is absolutely relatable. Like, so the character here is Charlie, played by Charlie. Leo Flanagan. And I do like the slow reveal of the mystery, and I, I, knowing what the real reason why things were happening, you know, I knowing the conclusion of the episode, going into it this time, my second ever viewing of the episode, I was watching Leo Flanagan's performance throughout. And it was very, very good. Mm. Because the episode doesn't give away until the the right moment yeah. that the system is trying to stop Charlie. But his performance, in ways that wouldn't give it away as well, is him reacting to, oh God, they're trying to stop me. Mm. Oh no, they're oh. on to me. No, this isn't like a malfunction. It's It's after me. Like when it goes after when the Kablam man goes after him in in the HR office, mm -hmm. and it just looks like it's just attacking the first person who comes near it and stuff. Yeah, the look on his face is, oh god no! Like not oh it's gonna get me. It's like, shite! Like I'm not gonna. It's trying to stop you know, me. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's because that's the idea at this point. Kablam the system has only just managed to get enough freedom within its structure to try and stop him. Like, so much so that it, like, it, um, you know, it kills Kira, for example, because it's at, it's that desperate. It's like, we're going to kill the girl he likes to basically say, back off. He's going to kill everyone, yeah. Yeah, like, like the, do, do you feel that? Do you feel that pain? That's what you're about to cause do you to millions that? of the... Do you feel the pain? <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> Good God. Like, that's... Um, yeah, that's what the Doctor explains at the end. She's like, it wanted you to feel the pain you're about to bring to millions of other lives. Right? So I get what they're doing. <laughs> but if the Kablam men, in that moment, if the system can devise a sneaky little subterfuge to get Kira to the lower floor to murder her, why don't they just kill Charlie? Why? Like, we see them attempt that with the one that goes after him. But, like... Why don't they, like, put a message to the managers, you know, like, in the system, say, look, you need to look, check this guy out, he's a bit weird. Well, that's the thing. It's implying that the system can't do that. It's also, they reveal that he is, like... His, his original origins, his studies and everything was in computer sciences and AI programming and all that. So he has done stuff to the system. He's okay. been doing this for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done such a system so that it will arrange all of these deliveries of the weapon, which okay. we will talk about, arrange deliveries of that 
on that date from that hangar, like they'll all arrive there and then they'll go out to these random places. Yeah. So he's he's set all of that up. Kablam the system has been trying to fight back, but he's been on top of it. This is its last desperate attempt to do something. So the first thing it does is send a message out. The second thing it does is send a Kablam man in a temporary blackout to try and kill Charlie. Mm. And then the last thing it does is it has the two fake a prize for Kira and then kill Kira to basically go, this is what you're about to do. Like, you're about to do this and you're fine with this. Do you know what I mean? What does he use, boo? Oh. Christopher was looking Which, at me. Just this. before... Well, that's the thing. The thing he uses, he, we find out that the death of um, Dan, Lee Mack's character, who's great. He's in it far too briefly, but he's great because he's usually very good and everything he's in. Uh, he's a good comedy actor, obviously. He's a good dramatic actor, so it's nice to see him pop up in this mm. and it's sad that this is the most he gets he wasn't in to it do. as long as I thought it would be nope because it's Lee Max you're like oh shoot Lee Max but he's in the next time trailer isn't he he's in the guest announcement trailer oh at yeah end, yeah at the end of and it when was it like, fell to yeah. earth oh. yeah oh. but he um, his death and the other workers deaths in like the, the you know the back storage area wasn't the Kablam system that was Charlie testing the weapon through hacked bots so Charlie has murdered several people by having them be subject to the weapon that he's going to use how does he make them gooey though well that's the thing the remains were being disposed of in that shoot what made them gooey though well they exploded didn't they yeah so then the mess was cleaned up and deposited in that vat to make it look like they were being like, because the the characters imply don't that they're like, oh, it's being fed into the system. Like, oh god, he's like creating fuel out of the remains. No, he's just disposing of the remains. That's in a fuel real, thing. That's real gross, man. It is. So Charlie is absolutely the bad guy. Yeah. But the problem is, the cause he's fighting for, and the the, the like, the the amount he is the amount of breaking point he hit before he became this, is completely understandable yeah but and not in like a you know it, it's one of those where like I think what they're trying to do is like a killmonger a Thanos they're trying to do that kind of thing of like they've got a good point but this is not the way like that's what they're trying to do yeah? would you not pro- the problem is he's coldly murdered several people yeah but- and is going to murder millions so that everyone stops using let me check my notes a delivery service. Yeah. I don't understand. Now, yes, the point is... Sorry. Oh, the yeah. point is there, the whole, like, we are being replaced by this stuff, is there. It's understandable, and it's absolutely the side the Doctor would normally be on in any of the script or era. But it's still... It's weird. It's, it's, it's Arachnid to the UK closing five minutes levels of, wait a minute, hang on. Everyone's in the right in some way here. What's happening? Like, what, huh? It's, I don't know. I I just, think it's fine until that last 10 minutes. I uh, This might just be me not understanding why people hate each other, but... <laughs> how... Excuse me. How does destroying people help people? Because his belief is Kablam will then be shut down. And eventually that will be the thing that finally makes companies stop using automation for 90% of the workforce. But surely wouldn't you... Um, but it's like, yeah, you... who's, who's going to then go and work those jobs, you idiot? Like, millions of people will be dead. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, like, and if, like... you, if you have the ability to hack into the system, make it so that it keeps crashing. Exactly, yeah. I was, yeah. I was just going to say, why not have it, like, malfunction when it does a delivery and, like, breaks or explodes. So mm. it might hurt somebody, but it's not going to kill someone. You know, you're you're actively hurting the people you're trying to help, and that makes no sense. Because what's going to happen then? The, the, the investigation would be, so a bunch of Kablam men randomly delivered a bunch of bombs to people in this sector of the universe. Oh, it was obviously a person. Yeah, like, so who made the bombs? Like, that's what the investigation would be. Yeah. It's very odd. And it'd be like, well, that's obviously a person. It's not the fact that it's a robot. That, that's not the problem. It's the person that did it. 
So it's like, that's not helping in any way at all. And let's pop the bubble, shall we? Bubble wrap? Bubble wrap. Like, really? Wow. If you wanted to do, like, a Batman 1989 thing, maybe, of, like, different products combined create something that kills people. Or you lace the bubble wrap, like, the material that it's made from is a separate thing, and they don't think to investigate it, and that's when they hit at the end. Like, trapped in the bubbles, for example, even, is, like, you know, a, a, a toxic, a toxic, like, substance. So that anybody who's messing around with it, like gets poisoned and dies. Well, just have it so... Because like, at least then it's like, well, even if you're not going to sit there popping bubble wrap, you're still going to handle it when you open your package. Do you know what I mean? Or just have it so that those packages each contain something that will hurt people. Exactly. Why not have it as, oh, it, it, like you've opened the box, a bomb will go off. You're like the trigger. Yeah. Like, a, like that, why, why bubble wrap? That's so stupid. That's taking... Or, or have the bubble wrap made from a material that dissolves into a gas. Or so, do you know what I mean? The idea is that when it arrives and it hits a certain temperature, which is like outside the factory or whatever, it dissolves. Like the moment the box is opened, the, the temperature affects it, and people or are like the air, it. the oxygen. Yeah, like because it. then it'd be like, oh my god, Kablam used this substance that killed loads of people. Do you know what I mean? But it's just like no bubble wrap that explodes. It, it's so stupid. It, if it was, especially it, when he perfects it, we see the perfected version kill Kira, and she basically is just gone. There's, like, no remains. She just explodes. It's just stupid. I mean, if it were a good story, that would have ruined it 100%. Mm. And I don't know who wrote that episode, but... Uh, this one Jesus. was a Peter McTeague script. And Peter McTeague's written some good stuff for Doctor Who, but this, I don't know, if, I just don't think this one works. I was um, going to say, oh, we need a filler episode. Oh, that's and you got some, you got some good, um... You got some good cast members. Callum Dixon as Jarvis Slade is a nice kind of like asshole boss. He plays that quite well. Mm. Um, Julie Hesmond Halsh, fucking excellent human being as well as an actor. Like as Judy oh, Maddox is nice. Um, she, she's she's the actor who did the. Um, I'm not going to say because you won't know. <laughs> You've never watched the soap oh, in your life. Oh, oh. She she was a very long running cast member on Corey, and she was like brilliant. But she's you know you know from um, the thing you'll know from us from is uh, cucumber. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah I recognise it. Yeah. Um, uh, we did the you remember at Mail College we did the debate where there was the the the, act, the the acting course did a debate on like whether acting the acting professional world was a meritocracy, and I um, moderated the debate. And Julie was like essentially the the judge of the debate. Oh, no yeah, she was great. She was lovely. Um, it's not the one you did bedtime stories with. Is it? No, I didn't do bedtime stories with anyone. Oh. That was just me. Dom Jolly was meant to do CBB bedtime stories that day, and last second he just stopped communicating with them. Ooh, I the don't team. know who that is. Um, Trigger Happy TV. I'm on the phone, that guy. Oh, the guy that was on our episode too. There you go, that's how you... <laughs> 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 just <laughs> last minute he pulled out, like, literally the morning of... It's a shame they don't put celebrities on that now. <laughs> ah, a social commentary. It's a good cast. It's just, it's just, a, it's. It's a waste. It's a shame. It's a, it's, it's. Make it be it not make sense. Amazon. It doesn't make sense. Make it be not Amazon. Yeah. Make it even be even make it so that it's like, it's a fad. It's based specifically around a company. Make it a parody of something like Prime energy drinks or Pokemon or something where it's like it's a fad and it's the delivery centre for a company that is huge at the minute maybe you know that's what I mean? what's happening to every <laughs> you know somebody's programmed it no the so, drivers are getting so, killed off that's why you pass on everyone no no they're actually robotic drivers and they throw your packages at random houses instead of delivering it to yours good god I reckon that's um, right. social commentary <laughs> Last couple things before we forget. Uh, what was the name of their original AI? Can you remember? Bert. Bill. It, it was like Swirly Steve. or something like that, wasn't it? Greg. Uh, no, no, it was like Swirly or something like that. That was fun. A little no, R two D two version of like the backup for the original oh, system yeah. AI. <laughs> I know what you mean. The one that, that, was, that, that they broke out and yeah, leave. that and right. that and the Kablam Men voiced by Matthew Greville, who does a very good job. Like it's a great chat, guys. But this, that, and the other, blah blah blah. Like it's it's perfectly pitched as a voice performance. I hate the design. I don't think it's a bad design. I think it's a little over designed. They don't look like a friendly robot, like, 
side. They should look more like something from Robots, you know, like the DreamWorks movie. Yeah. Rather than something from Elita Battle Angel, <laughs> they should look. They should look a little cuter. But they're also a bit too derivative. We've had the Heavenly Hosts. We've had yeah. the Vok robots. Like we've done this before. We've had the um, scary teacher ones. You know the the, the space whale. The oh the Smilers. We've had this. Yeah, that. yeah. They, they sort of just feel derivative of. Please do not throw hands at me. Like it's just See, that's charming. <laughs> In her <All> bedtime right. heels. <laughs> Uh, not the Vok robot. I don't remember the Vok robot. That laugh was adorable. I don't remember the Vok robot wearing bedtime heel. Um, your notes. We have to move on. We're doing that thing where we enjoy sorry, chatting too much about sorry, this nonsense. Sorry, sorry. How dare we? Okay. Sorry. How dare we have fun with this marathon we started? <laughs> if you don't know me, um, I'm, if you don't know you're me, going, by now. you're literally going against what you just you said. Just speak over me. I'm just in the background. No, music. we'll turn you down. Keep going. Turn you down. Turn you down. Go on, go on. If you don't know me, <laughs> shut up. I am horrified by robots. I don't like robots. I like the film robots because they're cute. She likes R two D two and K nine, and that's it. That is genuine. Oh, and that BD summit from um, the Star Wars game. B D one from the Jedi yeah. games. That yeah. is literally about it. I Pretty can't. Much. I can't cope. Pretty much. Um, Terminator is literally my idea of hell. Self service checkouts. Make her scream. I'd go and jump in the sea. I would. Um, so I hate things like this. Really hate things. Even if it's supposed to be charming, no. Don't want it. No, please. However, the little one in this was kind of cute, right? No. Oh, I thought he was. No. A little dustbin. So I wrote, I already hate it. And it only just started. What about the scutters? The Red Dwarf. They're all right. No. What about Crichton? He's got a big arm. No. Nah. That's his head. No. What about Crichton? He definitely squeezed my neck so my head would pop off. What is wrong with you? Crichton wouldn't do that. He might do. He might malfunction. That's oh, the for problem. for God's sake. This is why we don't have an Alexa. What about working Joes from Alien Isolation? <laughs> <laughs> that makes me want to void everything out of my body. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> oh, they are. <laughs> you know that video? If anybody watches Outside Extra, the video of Ellen um, having to rank spiders. Yeah. I would do that with robots. Yeah. Because they're fucking horrible and I hate them. Anyway. Uh, so I said, I already hate it. Ew, I hate it. Brackets, robot. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. In case I, in case I forgot. Um, bless her. Fez doesn't suit her. Uh, I'm definitely robophobic. Uh, it's the guy from the Queen's News. <laughs> the yes. Boss. He's not aged at all. <laughs> it's really weird. Um... Uh, the guy, oh yeah, the guy from Pizzo's, and I said, bubble wrap, sure. The end. All right, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I hate really... robots, I really hate robots. Not not one I'd revisit unless I'm box setting. I, I didn't want to watch it in the first place. Kablam uh, is one of the few episodes from this series to get merch. Uh, Can you buy one of the robots? Kablam posters and art was used on like t-shirts at Forbidden Planet, HMV, things like that. But With the, um, with the postman on it? Like the, with why the would person. anybody buy that? Uh, why not have Pating merch? But also, um, uh, the Kablam Man was a Funko toy. He got a Funko figure. Get out of my life. Not you. The, the Witch Finders! Um, this is fine. This is like a nice, cosy, you know... Six out of ten, three star. And I don't it's mean better, that. It's than I, I don't mean that in like a oh it's rubbish. I mean that in like a yeah, it's fine. I had fun. The Witch Finders was fun. Um Do you need to take that phone call? You've completely derailed and stopped talking. <laughs> I, I I said my comment. About the Witch Finders. Yeah, that's what I said. It's better than better than I remember. Is that literally all you have to say about the Witch Finders? No, but I was just concentrating on the fact that my phone was ringing. Good You'd grief. be terrible on live radio. Well, that's why I don't do it. <laughs> Yet. Let's so go on then. Witch Finders. It, it, hasn't there already been an episode about witches? Off the top of my head, no. Off the top of my noggin holes. There's episodes that have touched on that kind of period 
a little bit. What am I thinking of? I'm thinking of Inside Number Nine. Yeah, you're thinking of um, the trial of Elizabeth Gadge with David Warner. Yeah, I remember not liking it. I think you'd like that one a lot more now. You, now you've watched things like Witch, you'd probably enjoy that one a lot more. You've got a few more like Hammer Horror things under your belt. You'd probably yeah. be like, yeah, go on. Yeah, maybe. Um, um, but it was... What, what was the purpose of them going there? Do we know why they ended up there? Let me double check. If I I you No, know, it doesn't say here. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember No. why they go. Um, but because they, they're there yeah. when there's an execution happening. Yeah, because it's at Pendle Hill, uh, well, near Pendle Hill in Lancashire, in 1612. So you're at the absolute height. Height? Re- height? Sorry. <laughs> the absolute, I've been listening to Wheeze and Groaning Pod a lot and Lou's heard so many... Sorry, not Chris. I no, so many don't bit, tell them I really... So many bits of um, them doing their John Pertwee height Hi. gags. To the um, point where it doesn't sound like John Oh, no, oh no, no, no. None of their impressions of any of the doctors ever actually sound like them, but they're, they're committed. They also say Salarians instead of Silorians, and it drives me insane. Um, I find them so entertaining. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what other episodes that they, they, they've touched on. I mean, you have things like... Was it Enlightenment that had... Uh, yeah, that ends on Pudding Lane. And they accidentally are the, the ones who start the Great London. Fire of London. That's the end of the episode. They're like... Uh, Actually, no, I think we'll be fine leaving this. It's like, what? And the TARDIS dematerializes and we, the viewer, then see Pudding Lane. And you go, oh, right, they started the Great Fire of London. Okay. But well, like, I've got to say, England has some very, very cute street names. Some very <laughs> awful ones, but very uh, I mean, very we, all, we, we all, we've, all, we've all had witches before in the show. I just, I don't know, we just really recall. Well, we, well, well, technically, we don't get witches in this episode. That's no. the point. We don't get them in like the Shakespeare code either, but still, like the visual of witches is a good thing. But... We get zombies made out of mud. Mud. And it's resulted in a thing we've not been able to stop saying for the last few days. <laughs> <laughs> I've just remembered. <laughs> we will fill your king. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sure he'd love it. <laughs> The happiest. I'm sure if Ryan was doing it, he would have enjoyed <laughs> yeah. it. Um, my guys, my gals, my MB pals. The main reason this episode is worth talking about, let's be honest, is Alan Cumming as King James. Amazing, playing a Excellent. very, a very murky, nasty figure yeah, in history. Absolutely not a nice person. Who whatsoever. was also known to be very flamboyant, very big, mm. um, which means like it, you either just play him as a as a as a, a psychotic evil, despot, yeah. or you go the route of like Nero in um, in the Romans, yeah. like in oh, that yeah, serial, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. you play it as a pantomime villain yeah, yeah. with the shades of darkness allowed to sit when yeah. it's time to be dark, and they absolutely do that. And to get obviously a, I mean, he's a TV and film actor, and and is a fantastic TV and film actor. But to get a theatrical actor like Alan Cumming to play that was such a genius what choice. Do you know what, what, what have I seen him in? I mean, he's in loads of things. But for I can't for me, it for me, I can't remember the name of it. There's a sitcom about flight attendants from the ninety, like the early nineties. That was the first thing I remember seeing him in. But for me, he's all. I the the moment I see Alan Cumming, I immediately think of uh, Spy Kids. Ah, that's it. And X Men Two. Oh shit! Oh, sorry. Excuse me. You said the F word already. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he's Nightcrawler. <gasps> he's Nightcrawler. Yeah. Um, oh my god! No he, way. He's, he's phenomenal. He's absolutely phenomenal in this, and you can tell he's loving every second on screen. Um, oh my god, he's Nightcrawler. Especially alongside uh, Stavros Demetrakis, Alfonso. <laughs> like he's just got. He's just got great, incredibly handsome men helping him out. And the fact that he takes to Ryan immediately and he refers to him as like his Nubian prince. And you're like, Bloody hell. Okay. But it's also that wonderful thing of the, the episode really leans into the idea of how, like, the doctor's like, we can't interfere with this. Like, this is what happened. Mm. We can't interfere with it. 
but even then she does. Yeah, she can't help herself. She can't help herself and she goes to save old Mother Twiston because she's like, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. <laughs> and, and then all episodes of her being like, and her and Graham and Ryan obviously very subtly trying to delay things as them going, this is psychotic. You have randomly chosen an enemy. You decided that Satan shows up in the form of, like, rituals performed by older women of the communities. It was always... it was Always it was, older women or always women, confident women? It was, it, it was mostly mm. midwives. Yeah. Or um, nurses. Yeah. Because they healed people. And that was seen as witchcraft. Witchcraft, they Satan, used, they used, the instrument of Satan, and all that stuff. <laughs> That's a good question. They used, like, <laughs> natural uh, remedies and things like that, and that was seen as conjuring and making potions. And it was like, guys, why are you attacking the people that are helping you? That makes no sense! Because the people in power who could, like, tell people to do that stuff felt less smart. Did you know that the... Felt the... like lesser people. They felt intimidated by the people that were meant to be, like, their citizens, their servants, their underlings, their their youngers. Like, that's what they felt. Like, ultimately, master religion. And this episode really goes into that, whilst at the same time showing that depressing hypocrisy of it all. There is King James being very openly, like, flirtatious with Ryan. Yeah. And it's that whole thing of, like... Obviously, I'm not saying, why were they picking him? It's the whole point of, like, that's the flavour of the month for hatred, like, yeah. 200 years down the line from there. Yeah. To the point where people like Oscar Wilde and stuff in prison for being gay. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, go, skip ahead a couple hundred more years and King James's behaviour is the thing that people would suddenly be turning into, like, oh, God, yeah, no, it's 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 um, it's it's ungodly. Sinful. It's It's sinful, yeah. And it, it's... This episode, I think, does a great great job of depicting the utter, pointless, like, tragedy of, Christians always of, be the, hating. of the witch trials. Christians always be hating. Because obviously it was disgusting what was happening. It was horrible. And this episode leans, absolutely leans into that and then leans into the extra fear factor of that because for the first time ever in the characters on screen history, the Doctor is the target for this kind of thing. The Doctor... Kills a bitch. No, no, but like the fact they go for that, the fact they go, yeah, maybe she used to be able to blend in in periods like this and not be scrutinised, but now she cannot do that. Mm. And it, it's, it's, I mean, people right? I mean, the doctor gets in peril all the time, but like in this instance, it's like, yeah, any other incarnation wouldn't have had to have put up with what she does in this one when, um, what's it, uh, Savage, uh, she, when, Played by Siobhan Finneman, when Very she well when she turns everybody against the Doctor, mm. any other Doctor, it would have taken a bit more for her to convince everyone to go along with drowning the Doctor. Mm. Now we have a female Doctor. Nope. Yeah. Like that, I think that's no that's a really good <clears throat> direction to like. Uh, they, unfortunately, a stereotype to play on. And and they will go along with that over the course of the next series. There will be moments where they play into the inbuilt misogyny and patriarchy of daily you know day-to-day -day life yeah um in different eras of history uh, i think joy wilkinson wrote a good script here i just think i think the reason this one doesn't hit me anymore is because the alien actual threat is kind of explained very quickly and dealt with in the last 10 minutes it, it's a bit weird it feels like it, it feels like it was a two-parter condensed into a one-parter and the majority yeah. of part two is missing yeah to me it just seems a bit random because it's a tree that was holding a prison of... So, yeah, so it wasn't a tree. Aliens. It was an imprisonment for a species that were... And again, the Doctor assumes that they were uh, at war or they were war criminals. She assumes that. We never get official confirmation. But, but whoever they are, <laughs> they have a leader who is their king who is still trapped in the prison. The prison which was dumped on Earth and essentially disguised as a tree. As a tree. Like thousands of That's years so ago, weird. but it's most well. But then when you see the insides of it, and the cut parts are off. You're like, oh no, this is what it looks like. Yeah, but trees are fragile things. Would you not choose something that's quite? Yeah, but rewind like whenever it was Hardy. dumped there. What like thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, whatever. Yeah, you've not got people coming around chopping them down all the time for firewood or building homes necessarily. Especially if they it's get one. Weathered. Especially if it's one on Pendle Hill out in the arse end of nowhere. I haven't been to Pendle Hill since I was a child. Well, go back and... 
I remember being Go outside. back and fill your king. Um, <laughs> I remember being outside of the shop and there were two witch like figurines that somebody had made out of, you know, straw and stuff like that. And I remember thinking, I want to take that home. And I wanted a cauldron and a broomstick, but I wasn't allowed because they were expensive. My wife, everybody. Um Yay. It just feels like the resolution's too quick. That and the whole episode is told through a muddy grey filter. I just can't visually. get over the fact there's, there's not really much visually in it that sticks yeah. out. I, I, I just can't get over the fact that it, it's a tree. It's a tree that, that has been disturbed. We've so. had that before. What's the plot of Blubbin Hex at Alton Towers, for Christ's sake? Oh, yeah, that's shit as well. That's not there anymore. <laughs> um... It's just, yeah, it's just a bit fun. Like, Joy Wilkinson does a good job with the script. I just, eh. For me, weirdly, though, on this watch through, I knew I knew I was going to enjoy Alan coming because I remember thinking he was great the first time around. On this watch through, the thing I took away from it the most as being like, that's kind of cool, actually, was Tilly Steele as Willa, Willa Twiston. Yeah. She, she was did, great. She did, the, the, she did something very natural and realistic where yeah. she was obviously scared for her life. She's seen her grandma be killed. Yeah. She um kind of she's with the doctor when she's being accused, when the doctor's being accused, and the girl's kind of like, Well, I did see her do something strange. You know, she was so scared for her own life, she yeah. kind of outed the doctor at that moment and that's like that's so realistic, that's what people would have done because they were so scared. They would have Yeah. They, if they were being looked at themselves, they would have put it on someone else. Yeah. And it's sad, and obviously she regretted it, and she went back yeah. to help the doctor. But it was like that's that's really realistic. Mm-hmm. It's good. I think I think there's a, a tough balancing act with this because you don't want to undermine the horrors of the witch trials, mm. but it feels like there's a missing plot element of like Becca Savage already being infected, as we know, and like killing people off was to bump like the whole thing and this was killing people off was to then bump up their numbers. Yeah. But then what did they do when they arrived once they arrived? They just kind of shambled around and eventually grabbed King James. Yeah, what was that? It's like what would they have done if King James hadn't come to their town? Oh yeah, what is Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I never thought about that. Like what would they have done? What would they have achieved? Yeah. What would they have achieved if they had him? We would have gone back to London and then ruled the country, but it's like, yeah, but aren't there only like a certain number of you lot? Or are there thousands of you in that tree? And if so, why not just spread like a plague? And it's there are more bodies. Yeah, it's I don't know. I think I think the I think the concept of it's good because mm. uh, seeing these witches, witches, mm. um, come back to life and you know haunting and the zombie makeup was great in the in the woods. Yeah. I think that's a really cool interpretation. Yeah, but the fact that it's a tree prison it just seems stupid to me. And the fa- and, and it was only because they. Uh, used the tree as a hanging tree or cut it down to make the gallows or something it's like uh, what? that's really that's you've got such an interesting concept mm. but you've not thought about the alien prospect and you've just kind of gone oh just put that in there because don't don't it also, just, seem, just seems really out of place also the doctor challenging King James on his beliefs is a great scene mm. when he's uh, questioning her when she's um, bound to the tree yeah but like it doesn't change him though, really, no, does it? No. Still, so it's 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 sort of like. Huh. It's yeah, you're right. It does sound like a two it's, part it's a, that's it's, been squished into one. Yeah, um, we need to crack on. Though. I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, For those wondering at home, why battery? <laughs> uh, why? Uh, love the set. Thought it looked great. Really dark and depressing. The set. Yeah. What do you mean? Of like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I mean, just the, just, just the, the yeah. film indications, yeah, the way yeah. it's all dressed. Okay, right. But yeah. they meant a set. I was like, there wasn't really a primary set in this bar, like that yeah. one meeting room where they looked over the witch hive, witch finding equipment. I don't really understand this. What did the horses do to deserve death? It mentioned something about killing the horses. I can't remember now. Oh, I need to write things out of context. Uh, but yeah, horses don't deserve death. Uh, wow, all this scene eating is making me hungry. <laughs> King James felt he's right. Uh, Graham, Graham. Well done for reading on the not so subtle subtext there. <laughs> no, no. 
Uh, Graham in the witch fight a general hat was very funny. Oh, that's a great It always looked watch. like it was going to swallow him. Can we, again, without going into full detail, can we talk about the fact that Bradley Walsh is absolutely the secret weapon of this series? 100%. And a lot of it, from what I know, this is just from like Doctor Magazine and things like that, is just he would improv on set. Just nothing that steals a scene, but just those little kind of moments. Most of them made it in. And it's like, yeah, thank God for that. Because at the minute, they're all kind of, at least one of them, if not two of them, each episode of our TARDIS team, is surplus to requirements. Yeah. So thank God for these little moments because it is making Graham clear, clearly the one that you're like, yeah, I want, I want to spend more time with him. Yeah, definitely. And like, that's not you know that's not to dump on Tozin or Mandit, but it's like those little interjections are at least making Graham memorable. Yeah, at this point, definitely, and he's adorable. And if you don't love Graham, just smart on you. Uh, fill your king. Just no other. No, no other note. No other fill your note. king. Hilarious. We will fill your king. Good grief. <laughs> Good gravy. <laughs> Christopher said, write that in your notes. And I was like, baby, it's we'll already there. Fill your king. <laughs> she, just, she just put a picture of an eggplant. That's all she put. Good grief. An eggplant and a surprised face emoji. I put those big eye ones. Like, <laughs> look, at the look, at the, look at the eggplant. <laughs> um, it Takes You Away. Written by Ed Heim. Uh, and starring uh, Ellie Walwick as Hannah, Christian Rubick as Eric, Lisa Stock as Trini, or Trina, Trini, or the thing that's pretending to be her. Mm. And uh, two surprise guest appearances, uh, Sharon D. Clark reprising her role as Grace. Yeah. And, oh... Oh, it's the Kevin Eldon show. It's the Kevin Kevin Eldon show. In That's a the scary title. role. <laughs> Kevin Eldon has ribbons. Um, I like this one a lot. I, I didn't like it the first time I saw it. I thought it was stupid. Mm. But now I've seen it. I, okay, I'll explain later, but it made me cry. It's a commentary on loneliness and grief. And it's a very well done one. It, um, it starts out as a monster mystery cabin in the woods story that very quickly becomes a, nope, nope. There is a pathway to somewhere else in this house. Yeah. And, and then gets very Lovecraftian meets Douglas Adams yeah. in its concept toward the end. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Hannah's on her own. She's blind. She thinks her father has deserted her. Things haven't been quite right between them since they moved to this cabin. They did it to get away from the city because they felt weird since her mum passed away. Her dad seemingly has been taken by this monster as far as she knows. But really, he's found a passage to a mirror world where his wife is still alive. You can't say mirror world. And he's... What? You can't say mirror world. <laughs> They're not over 17 mirrors in the mirror world. You can't do that. <laughs> but like, look at them shine. <laughs> look at them shine. And... Do you know what Ribbons was hiding under his tunic? <laughs> his mirror balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine if that was the bit between the worlds? <laughs> it, was just, it was just Mr. Susan in his mirror world. <laughs> oh my God, someone needs to make an edit of that right now. Will it be this one here? Will it be that one there? Which one will you choose? Doc just goes, let's get a shift on. And just go through a mirror. Leave him on his own. Um, and then he gets eaten by moths. Um, so. <laughs> you can't save mirror world. <laughs> Christ alive. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the Mighty Boosh season one. Go on, folks. Check it out. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> He's basically found, he's found a mirror reality where she is still alive <laughs> and he's been visiting yeah. and now he's stayed there a bit too long. Yeah. He's created the illusion of this monster outside to keep Hannah in the house so she doesn't get lost or come looking for him. Mm. So she stays in the house. But, he stayed, but he stayed a bit, he's been there I think it's like three days, I think it's three, four days. He's yeah. been there a bit too long, but it's because he can't bring Trina back. Mm. he doesn't want to leave her there yeah um, he also doesn't want to leave his wife like he's found her again and when the team get over there they find Grace there as well who apparently arrived just before they did and of course after I love that Graham approaches it incredibly logically at first yeah 
but the more they talk, the more he's like, oh my God, I've missed you so much. And it's it's so believable. Even though he knows that it's not her. Well, that's the thing. He, he, he starts convincing past. himself it is yeah, yeah, because exactly, yeah. the real, the other version is too sad because it means she's not there anymore. And I love the give, I love the giveaway to him. Yeah. That it's not Grace. Because the thing is, well, even the doctors, I don't think they know that they're not these people. Yeah. But because they are also essentially puppets of the solar tract, like when she just says, like, it's fine, Ryan will be fine, yeah. stay here with me. And as he says, like, you almost had me. Yeah. But like Grace would never leave him like out there to fend for himself. She'd never leave him in danger. I love that. Yeah. Love that bit. And again, the bit where Trin kind of implies that Han will be fine, don't worry about it. Why? And that's when Eric kind of goes like, oh God, no, it's not you, is it? Off. Well, she was given the option of either, you know, keeping him mm. or having the Doctor who's got this wealth of stories and knowledge. And then well, that was it in the end, wasn't she chose... it? Yeah. And the moment she chose the Doctor, she's like, it's not you, it's and not you. off he yeah. goes. Yeah. Um, uh, what, something I was just confused about. Why did he not take his daughter there? Uh, I think partially because he didn't know how to explain it or or tell her, really. But also the danger. Because keep in mind, he would have also crossed through... I'm trying to what it's called now. Um, <laughs> an anti-zone. He would have also crossed through the anti-zone. So he wouldn't want to put her in danger. Do you know what I mean? Because there's this creepy like tunnel network between the two places. Yeah. And he wouldn't want to put her in danger. So he's gone over there and snuck visits. And now he's like... Oh god, I've got carried away and I've stayed here too long. Yeah. yeah. Um But I get that as well, because it's like he lost her and now he's suddenly found her again. How could he explain that to anyone? Yeah. He knows this Whoops. is impossible. Okay. Sorry, she was treating me. Sorry. Um, like he yeah. knows this is impossible. So I get I get like the the two like I said, the two twining currents of the story is one is grief, told through Eric and then through Graham. And it's brilliantly done. Yeah, it For is. both of them. I think, um, you know, uh, uh, Christian Rubeck and Bradley Walsh, respectively, do it so well. Mm. And Lisa Stock has Trini and Sharon D. Clark as Grace play their part brilliantly enough that you're like, oh, God, it's really sad that this isn't real. And uh, and the idea that the... I love, I love the... the Again, the Lovecraftian, Douglas Adamsian. For sake. You know, the solar tract is something that existed before the universe. And when the components came together to create the universe, the solar tract is one part of the equation that would destabilise it all. Yeah. So it was... How was it I described it to you? <laughs> Have you written it down your notes? Yeah. Yeah. So you were like, right, hang on. What's happening I was really confused. Um, <laughs> uh, Christopher described it... Oh, here we go. Like a cake. Yes. So... You've got everything you need to for, make a for, brilliant cake. To make a cake, everything, every single thing you'd need, but there's also an extra ingredient that doesn't go in it. And what was it? A cup? HP. Yeah, there's brown sauce. HP brown. There's sauce. a there's a there's a there's HP a, cake craft. There's a bottle there. Yeah, there's a bottle of brown sauce. Yeah. Everything else is the flour and the eggs and the milk, like everything else that would go into what? the icing or whatever. Like, shut up. Don't put milk in a cake, you weird. <laughs> Did you tell which one was baked? <laughs> um, like every everything else. <laughs> Ba- the battery, the battery, come on, come on, come on, stop derailing, stop derailing, the battery, the battery, the battery, come on. Everything, boo, come on, the battery's going to run out, come on, come on. Oh, my God. Everything, everything that goes into a cake is yeah, there. Yeah, And then there's a bottle of HP sauce. <laughs> and the bottle of HP sauce, the bottle of HP sauce <laughs> wants to be in the cake. But if it is, it will ruin It'll the cake. It will ruin the cake, yeah. Like, that cake. just came up with this off the top of his head. I was very impressed. <laughs> Because we paused it, didn't we? You were like, wait, hang on. I, I got quiet. I just paused it. I was like, all right, but yeah. So the, the solar tract is the bottle of HP sauce. Mm. It really wants to be part of that cake. But if it is, it destroys that cake. That yeah. cake is ruined. Yeah. That's really sad for the HP sauce. Yeah, and it wants to be a part of it, so it'll take... What was it? Oh, no, well, the, the, whole, the whole point was that, like... The moment they, oh, it's they in a stick cake a, box. It's in a cake box. It's in a this, cake box. This mirror yeah. is a crack in the cake There's box. There's a crack in the cake box. And the HP sauce, it's trying to get, the moment it has a connection with yeah, the cake, yeah. starts to bleed through the cake box. And, it, yeah. and that connection is either Eric 
or Graham or whoever it is that can hook. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. And then the doctor's like, right, no. I'll stay with you forever. Like, you just want a friend. That's all you want. I will be your friend, but you've got to seal it up between... You've got to fix the cake box. You've got to seal us off yeah. from everyone. And Because um, that's the whole point of the anti-zones. It's like these things apparently exist, and the Doctor's aware of them, these little cracks in the fabric of reality yeah. that take you from one place to another that shouldn't exist but do crop up. Yeah. And they're mostly left unfound, but they're out there. And this one has either been created by... Or has been able to be, you know, accessed by the Solitrax world. The Solitrax bubble of reality. Mm. But the Doctor's there and it becomes very clear whilst there that, no, this is, it's too late now. Like, I have to go back. Me being here is the crap. Yeah. Me being here is the anchor to reality. Mm. Um, beautifully played by Jodie. Yeah. Beautifully voiced at that point by Sharon D. Clark. Yeah. We have, we have mixed feelings about this little fella down here. Um, we think the puppetry isn't bad, but it detracts from kind of the the, 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 the solemnity and um, sadness of that uh, moment. And the weight of the, you know... Yeah, it takes moment. away from it a little bit. Yeah. Now, it's... if the frog's mouth didn't open, yeah. and it was just the voice of Grace, that'd be fine. Yeah, that would have made it so much better. Yeah. But... And I love how it's like, why, why are you a frog? Because she's like, because Grace like liked frogs, and that's I, how, I delight in this form. That's how, yeah. yeah. That's how she proved to Graham that um, she was who she was because she had a frog necklace. Oh, no, because Graham had his had her. Frog Graham had her frog on, necklace on, which which, which he bought cute. for her. She likes frogs. Um, it's very cute, um, but it's a frog. I, I, when Christopher showed me this frog, I cried. There's two. It's not been allowed to be displayed with the figure it came with. She I put both frogs I, on, on canine on the shelf. I could not give them in back because I, I've got a weird attachment to tiny, tiny figures of animals and I just can't cope. That's something I learned about myself today. So for the purpose of this video, that's the Solitract. And because I couldn't find a white fold chair, it sat on the 11th Doctor's TARDIS chair. So there we go. Um, I, right. I love him. So I wrote in, yeah. my, in my doodad... Uh, establishing shot looks like a painting when they're mm -hmm. in the forest. Beautiful. The colours, absolutely stunning. Uh, with the mountains in the background. Beautiful. Uh, a sheep. Mm -hmm. Love it. The woolly rebellion. Hilarious. Love it. That'd be scary. Um, I mean, you've seen the film Black Sheep, right? No. Okay, we're watching that. Uh, <laughs> Cabin in the Woods vibes. Yeah. Intentionally. Yeah. Love, love, love the front door. Love a fjord. Love a fjord. Absolutely love a fjord, but I love the front door. It was nice. Um, I can't cope very well with stories like this. So when it comes to, like... Having, having to, to say choose, goodbye. Yeah, having to choose yeah. between your loved one and something else, I cannot cope with that. So, like, a is it AI? Is that the film? With the boy with the... He's a robot. Yeah. But yeah, I can't watch that. Armageddon, no. Just things like that, I, 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 I do not handle it well emotionally. So this made me cry because... Mm. I oh, yeah, that. I think it's one of the few times this, this show in the marathon has actually brought you to tears. Because it, it, I yeah. automatically... It's making me emotional again right now. I put myself in that situation and I'm like, I, I, don't, know what, I, I don't know what I'd do. I wrote, um, things like this make me sad. I would destroy the world to be with you for one more day. I'm crying again, God's sake. I just hate it. I hate it. This is why I won't watch this episode again. Uh, cake and HP analogy. HP cake craft. <laughs> okay, the frog was freaking adorable. That's what I wrote. I am actually crying. I hate, I hate stories. But, but at the same time, it reinforces where Graham's mind is at in the show, which does help with the next episode or somewhat. But it also finally furthers the Graham and Ryan relationship. Yeah. Because he calls him Grandad for the first time at the end of the episode. That was cute. Um, so cute. We rewound it. <laughs> we did. It was very cute. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't cope with things like that. So it's a great episode and it's beautiful, but I can't watch it. Also, Ribbons was great. Ew. Ribbons was like a crossover between uh, Shockeye 
from um, the two doctors. An orc from Lord of the Rings. I was going to say, and Gollum. He was like oh, shock no, no, no. and Gollum. <laughs> yeah. That, it, um, it's, it's very we get a glimpse of his sort of his mentality and his his bartering and the idea that information is precious. Like that's what he deals in. Um, but you have to give him something significant. It's either the sonic screwdriver or whatever. The tube was it, wasn't it? <laughs> Your tubular. He kept calling it the tubular. Um, yeah, he plays creepy really well. He's so Kevin Eldon's brilliant. <laughs> and we just could not resist making the joke of oh, this is perfect Sunday. <laughs> so, now my perfect Sunday my perfect is when you give me your tubular. <laughs> um, fill your king with no! this tubular. No! Um, the moths, great, adorable, creepy. I don't like moths, but they're they were adorable. Yeah, and then they stripped flesh from bone. I know, but they were adorable. Mm. They looked very. Um, I sounded a bit like Kitty then from Ghosts. You did. Um, <laughs> Speaking of, we really need to finish this so we can watch Resolution because Alison's in it. So. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I I, re- I really like it. Takes you away. Um, for me, it's one of the ones again this series where it's like that's great, mm. that's really good. It's a shame that the finale can get in the fucking sea. The Battle of Ranscor Av Colos, which also stars Phyllis Logan as and an, as Andino, um, the lovely Purcell Ascot. Benny from Wizards vs. Aliens. He's a lovely fellow. I filmed, with him, few, film, filmed with him a few times. He's lovely. Not aged. As Delph. Um, really suits that hair. Uh, he does, yeah. Um, Mark Addy. Robert Bloody Baratheon as Paul Tracky. Um, Robert Bloody Baratheon. And Samuel Oatley as... Spoiler alert, folks. You're never going to believe this. It's such a shocker. Oh, my God. Like, the drama of this. Returning as Zim Jar. <sighs> Can we talk about how Tim Shaw is not a bad performance by any means? No, the voice is amazing. and not and like his his delivery and the voice uh, editing, the sound yeah. editing, great, really, really, good. the costume and the makeup, great, creepy, intimidating. The slightly more dilapidated version of his look in this, obviously, aged. with the tubes yeah. stuck in him yeah. and everything, brilliant. What a mostly nothing character. Yeah. Like we are never going to remember him. The same way we would others that have been given, like, pride of place as the, like, oh, so he's the big bad of the series, is he? Mm. Like, if, is he? If we like, don't... really? Is he? Like, Yvonne Hartman's more memorable. She did her duty for Queen and Country. Mm. She did her duty. Like, you remember that character. Yeah. Like, she's not the big bad, but, like, Torchwood was the, the overarching thing. And it builds up to it. So when like she rocks up, she's like, "We're Torchwood." You're like, "Oh my god!" The the Institute, Queen Victoria, like this is what it's all become. Oh my god! Whereas in this, it's just oh Tim Shaw's back. You know the tooth guy. Remember no. tooth guy. Yeah, you're tooth guy. Yeah, you're tooth guy. The guy with the tooth on his face. Now the idea of a of a, a race that is only ever comprised of two people, like there's only ever two of them, mm. and they're just sort of. I don't know, birthed into existence, Ethereal created, kind of, whatever, yeah. yeah. And their thing is that their belief is their lifeblood and their job, yeah. essentially. And they worship... Like, again, this comments on religion, but it doesn't insult religion. Mm. It's very respectful of the idea of a, you know, a monotheistic doctrine and, and, and a deity. Like, the creator is their god. Mm-hmm. They live to prepare for his return. And in doing so, they create things with their belief. And it's a, um, it's a crazy. It's a cool idea for a, for a sci fi con. Yeah. It's very, oh, Star- yeah, yeah, it's very Star Trek. Like, yeah, this feels definitely. like it's fallen out of the original series. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And like, Delph is, is the newest, because they sort of rotate. One always overlaps the next one's arrival. Mm. And Delph is the newest, and Andino's trying to kind of help him harness his side of, of, of their belief power. Yeah. And the idea of somebody coming in and taking advantage of it. It is great. Yeah, we've had that whole thing before of like, you know, oh, they're they're the saviour, they they must be a god. It's like <laughs> false goddess. Like we've had that before. And that can work, but like so he arrives and then four thousand years pass and in that time they use their belief to build a tower which they then collect planets in crystals like ships in a bottle which is a story that we've already seen in the pirate planet yeah yeah it's uh, essentially... all planets being stolen 
in the Stolen Earth Journey's End. We figured it was kind of like... He's got people in stasis, right? Because people outside of the world have realised there's a Stenzer on this planet. We need to get down there and stop them right now. Yeah. And he's had them either killed or suspended in stasis as hostages. Why does he have them suspended? Well, exactly. Like, I just... I'm, I'm sure all of this is explained. But it's so boring. It is boring. It's like... I don't think a last story of a season, especially an, a, a, an episodic, partially anthological show like Doctor Who, has to necessarily be a finale. Yeah. But it should at least be like a, oh God, you save the best till last. It should be like, oh, that's a great story to end on. Mm. The only real part of this that feels worthy of being the last of the run is the investment in Graham. Yeah. And even then, immediately after it takes you away, it feels weird that he's in vengeance mode. I don't think that's weird. I think it is immediately after that episode. I feel like we maybe needed one more episode to let him kind of stew in the idea of, like, what he has lost. No, I... I like, well, where that's a focal... A focus point of the plot, I mean. I think, I think it's... I think it's... I mean, if they'd have, like, mentioned it, it would have made sense because he's angry that mm. somebody's taken the form of his love. Yeah. And it's brought up all the feelings of how sad and obviously how angry he True, is. But, and then being, but it ends on the granddad moment. It ends on, like, a things are going to get better. Like, you know, there are still things to be happy about. But then it... it, it Grace lives on in me and her grandson, you know what I mean? But, but then, you, it, you know, it's still fresh in his mind... That, you know, Maybe. Yeah. I, I, I think it makes sense. Fair enough. Different strokes. Um, no, I'm right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, I also kind of hate the fact that he tells the Doctor he's going to kill him. And then that doesn't really lead to anything. In, 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 ter in terms of that scene. Like, that scene is the, the payoff, the setup. But then the payoff happens nowhere near the Doctor and her only being told about it after it's all been resolved. Well, I think that makes sense because he would have actually had the opportunity to kill him because the Doctor wasn't there. If the Doctor was there, she'd obviously be like, no, Graham, don't do it. No, but that's the thing. I kind of I kind of hope she could at least have seen it. Oh, I see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, be yeah, witness yeah, yeah. to it in some way. Yeah. Um, like, have it so that the resolution of this story rests on Graham making the right decision. Yeah. Whereas instead, it's just the B-plot was resolved yeah, yeah, by yeah. Graham making the right decision. Yeah. The B-plot being... How do we make sure Tim Shaw doesn't hurt anyone else? Yeah, that's true. Um, but he... I also... He get... don't, worry, don't worry, Doc. I didn't kill him. I just sentenced him to an eternal waking death in a chamber that he will never be freed from. At that point, I kind of wish there was another scene where she's like, Graham O'Brien, you are the strongest person I know. But well, def definitely up there. And then they all leave. And then she goes back and just kicks the plug out. <laughs> it's like, sorry, mate. It feels as, it feels as, do you not see that this is a bit ropey as the mum spider getting killed in yeah. Iraq? It's in the UK. Yeah, I guess. And spoiler also, alert, Tim Shaw does not come back. Yeah. So there's no like, oh no, don't worry, something happens later. Or no, the authorities are going to come for him. Or none of that happens. Nothing. And it, it doesn't really make an impact. If that thing shuts down and he is alive in there and awake, he is dying, he's going to die in there. Yeah. And Same also, as the spider. Also, don't like, they do know? something so people don't know he's there? Like, put like a... Oh, essentially, the, the that planet's not going to be used now because even the... Um, I'm trying to remember what their, their, their collective name is as a... The two ethereal they, yeah, people um, kind of make it so people don't can't sense that he's there or can't figure out that he's there. Oh my God, what's that? The Ux. Yeah, the Ux leave. Because they decide that, like, this waiting for the creator is doing nothing, but if we go out there and use our faith and belief to help people... And find out about the world. And find out about the universe. Yeah. You know, in his name, but, like, you know, like, not waiting around, yeah. we could do better. So they leave. So Tim Shaw's just stuck there. I'm all right with that. Also, Earth is threatened. At one point, Earth is getting transmuted and transmogrified into being in one of those crystal things. But we never see it. No. So there's no kind of... Oh, no. Impact. We don't yeah. really... You know, like um, the Witchfinders before it, it's kind of just, you know... 
yeah, it's just the, the same book, kind of visual. Well, it's just the same kind of visual settings. Mm. The variation, the variety of maybe cutting to Earth to show us, even just off world and just hearing the screams and the panic, because mm. it's not necessarily in the present day for our characters, for our for our TARDIS team in their present day. Mm. So I understand, like, oh, well, you know, maybe it's in the far future, so it'd be kind of expensive to... Fine, sure, you don't have to, like, create brand new sets, but yeah, yeah. give us something. Mm. Or maybe don't drag Earth into it. Maybe have it so that he's, like, maybe next I'll acquire... What was that rock called again? Uh, like, set up the whole thing of, like, that's what I'm going to do next. Mm. And then it's like, yeah, we got to stop him. Because we as viewers are going, yeah, that's our home, don't do that. Do you know what I mean? But instead of like, it's happening, is it? You can see it? You can see the effect of it? Now, the visual props of the planets inside those crystal things looked great. That like, clouded by the material, vibrating like kind of thing. thing. Yeah, because yeah. early on you were like, oh, is it like, is it like, is it like bugs? It's like moths or something. Yeah. I was like, just waiting for the petty to drop <laughs> when they reveal what it yeah, was. Yeah, this is, I think this was the only one I'd not seen of this series because I probably thought, ah. Oh, um, we... Um, let's see. It was broadcast. Would you've been? Would you have been in Panto? We didn't. Yes, separate? it was broadcast on the 9th of December. Yeah. The last, the last one we saw together, I think, was Demons of the Punjab. Yeah, and then I, I was, and then I, I kept up with most of it, and then I was just be like, oh, no, I'm too sad now. <laughs> and the thing is, there's an odd one with this because, like, I think it's a really whack finale. I think it's crap yeah, as a finale yeah, it is. and yet friend of the show uh matthew big damn watson really likes this one really so it was in the, it, it was in the last yeah. full year of five who fans and it was when we were doing the watch alongs when um dan billy and john had a flat together in great manchester and right. they get do you remember they get a guest on it's like phoenix did an episode and like uh jenny Lippman did an episode i did an episode and matt did an episode mm-hmm. he did the battle of ranskar of Colos. I remember watching. I remember watching on iPlayer at the Diggs in Lincoln and going, mm, "This was a lot of old bollocks." Panto Diggs. And then watching the Five Who Fans video after, was like, "Oh, let's see what the lads thought," and being like, "Matt, what? <laughs> like what? Matt, what? What?" Um, I because I don't think it's got anything about it that makes it remotely special. Like I think a lot of the Graham thing works, but because it's not because the A and the B plot don't merge and converge in the third act. Mm-hmm. And they're still just kind of off on their own thingy. Yaz feels almost superfluous. They set up the idea of, oh, on this planet, it affects your mind because the atmosphere. And that's why um, yeah, uh, Pal Tracky's all like amnesiac, uh, an amnesiac when they find him. Yeah. So we need to put these patches on. And then later on, we need to put these ones on. So do you do this? They just keep adding things to their face and neck. But like yeah, they put those patches. on. They set up the idea of if you have this off for long, it's going to affect you. Mm. Maybe have it so that Graham loses his at some point and it becomes a real battle with his conscience mm. as to whether or not he's going to murder Sim Shaw or not. What, what, Sim Shaw. What annoyed me, though, is because he's... he's Instead, the Doctor and Yasmin take him off briefly and they go, oh, my head! And then they go back to the TARDIS and they're like, right, we'll be fine now. It's like, is that it? Is that literally all you're doing with that concept? Like, early on, you showed us a character who knew what he was doing, basically a vegetable. Yeah. Like... There's a threat level there you can play with and you're doing nothing with it. Going back to Graham, though, they could have played on something that would have been so effective mm. that he's such a nice, you know, dad granddaddy character that he's so kind, he's so lovely, he's funny. Mm. Um, he's the person you go to in a bad situation to make you feel better. Yeah. He was angry. Yeah. And he was, you know, he'd made a decision, I'm going to kill him. They could have made that character um growth so strong in this episode that he you know he's angry you mm. see him really angry and really mm. scary because people like that are scary when they're angry yeah when lovely people are, are like enraged yeah it it's, surprises you You're yeah like, what the hell it takes yeah. your breath away it takes you away that was the last episode oh sorry. yeah um so they could have done that in this mm. but they didn't because it was it just was in the background and like you say, and then he just made the decision. And it was a, it was a good scene, mm. but it's it was the B plot. It could have been so much more effective if they'd have if they'd have expanded on that characteristic. Um, Did that make sense? In yeah, no, mind? I got, I get okay, that. 
also um, we learn in episode one and episode two that the Stenza utilize some weird ass weaponry to get their targets, like the tentacle creature in the first yeah, episode. Well, exactly, but like they're using that technology. Mm. In in the Ghost Monument, we learn of like one of their weapons plants that they've forced people to work on the, in this facility, yeah. and it includes like the really sentient cloths and stuff. And the sniper bots were like stuff of theirs. Part of it in this last episode. Exactly in this last episode. Well, we get the sniper bots again, and there are there's obviously only five costumes because at one point there's ten of them. Both appro- both teams approaching from each side. It's clearly just the same five, yeah. and. They're a crap shot. Why are they called sniper bots? They're not snipers. Chris, or whoever came up with the concept of the sniper bots. That's not what... Do you know what a sniper is? <laughs> a sniper is a long distance... A sniper rifle is a long distance weapon that requires incredible accuracy. Exactly. That is enhanced by the fact that it is a scoped long range weapon. What? They should be called something else. <laughs> Like, have Ryan just offhandedly call them blast soldier bots? Soldier bots. Like, just blast bots or soldier yeah. bots. And then they ju- so it's not the names of them, that's just what they call them. But the doctor in the ghost monument is sniper bots. It's like, no. while they're firing up close then. No, so dumb. Um, yeah. And also, and also it, it, there's not enough of a, oh, Tim Shaw, Tim Shaw throughout the series. I forgot about him after that episode with the sniper bots. Like I said, there's, it, there's, there's not really a payoff. No, there's not an underlining threat throughout the series of this person is this breathe this 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 is scary it's still going on that's also because there wasn't a thread throughout the series beyond that's what i meant sorry. sort of the fan dealing with kind of their own familial stuff on a low-key level there should have been like you said there should have been a th- in the ghost monument they should have found a thing amongst the stenza stuff that the doctor's like we need to look into that and then in like episode five or six whatever those ones would be in this version of the series it'd be them following up on something. Like the technology or, the guy used to get to Rosa could have been something from or, that. Or not even every episode necessarily. Like maybe, like Charlie's, Charlie was a brilliant thing. You'd be like, who the hell supplied him with bubble wrap that explodes and kills people? They look into it. This is Stenza technology. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like just kind of thread it through the idea of things. we have to learn more about them because like, somewhat, like you know, someone's giving away all this stuff and then you find out that it is... Sim Shah, who's essentially kind of coaxing them mm. to get to work. Because them showing up there is pretty much a complete coincidence. Yeah. So How it's like... Exactly. Um, the Doctor directs the TARDIS to a planet called Ranskor of Kolos. Wow. Oh, oh, there's a bunch of distress signals. Oh. But, that, but that's from all the ships that fell there. Yeah, but... He wasn't time. like, I'll send them to you, necessarily. Mm. So, okay. It's really random. He could have been there a long time. Can we not call him Tim Shaw? Can we call him Shit Predator? Yim ya. Uh, any notes? If so, we have to go through them pretty yes, quick. Yes, okay. Here we go, here we go. We've talked a long time on these ones. Well, there is five episodes. And what's fascinating is we're like, oh, we need to run through these, but we're actually finding a lot to talk about. I know, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's, it shows that even the ones we're not in love with, there's stuff that's getting us to talk about them, so. Oh, it's two people from shows I like. <laughs> Um, the what are they called the ethereal race the ox the ox um, the lady is from Downton Abbey yes and obviously the younger guy is from Wizard of Sins yes and then I, and then Robert Baratheon appeared and it was like oh from another show that I liked uh, don't particularly like this villain but this is pretty villainous mm-hmm. uh, the shot of Tim Shaw connected to the life pad and the, and the doctor was cool so when she went into that room and saw that he was, you know, it was him. Yes. And he was telling her, you know, how long it's been and what's been going on. Um, when she's got the thing strapped to her back, the shot of him in the, like, connected to that pad in the middle. Yeah. And her stood there. It was, like, red. It was, like, red and grey and black. That shot just looked amazing. Mm. It looked like it could have been something from... Like alien or something, it, just the. Concept. There's some great again, lighting again, in this one in particular. Yeah, the color. It's just a shame it was it all just, what I like to call red dwarf sets. It was yeah. just let's shoot in a factory. Yeah, exactly. But just, that uh, shot just looked really cool to me. It just looked really cool. Um, music is good. Music was really really good. Uh, <laughs> nice one, lads. 
Fight with the Tooth Man was good. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, lads. <laughs> Fight with the Tooth Man. And, and Ryan saying he loves Graham. Yeah. That was cute. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. See, when he's good, he's good. But... Well, he's at what I think is his best in the next story. Oh, okay. Which, to me, is the proper finale yeah. to the series. Because, unlike Tim Shaw, it takes a thread that makes its first appearance in the first episode... And then we're reminded of throughout the series as recently as the last episode to deal with this thread is It Takes You Away. What's Ryan's main theory in It Takes You Away at the start? That her dad's left her. Yeah. And that's something that has been brought up. Yeah. We, we said that in the Sonaric Taranga conundrum it felt a little, all right, mate, calm down. But... Then you realise, oh, this is actually the underlying thread this year, isn't it? The fact that his dad's left. The fact that he has unresolved issues yeah. with his father. Yeah. And that's a big part of why he is the way he is and why he finds it hard to trust people or their motivations. Maybe why it's hard for him to accept another father figure in his life yeah. in the form of Graham yeah. as his granddad. Gets a payoff in the next episode. Okay, I've not. I don't think I've seen this next episode. You have not, and and I am really excited for you to see it because it is one of my favourites of the Jodie Whittaker era. Okay. So next time, and immediately after this recording for us, um, if you want to get ahead and watch Revolution, Revolution, Resolution, sorry, Resolution with us, get it in before the next video. We're going to now stop this recording and watch it, and we'll record our video about it tomorrow. You want to watch it right now? Yeah. It's an hour. Okay. You don't have to. We don't want to. It's just that ever angry during this. We're doing stuff. Okay. <laughs> We're doing it for them. For the people. You watch this shite. For the fam. For the for the fam. For the, for the like, <laughs> ten odd people that watch it. <laughs> God oh. damn it. Um, oh, wow. so cute. Let us know your thoughts on the second half of series 11 down below. Bye! Bye. There's a frog on a chair! Oh.